and day. And uh, these are the stories that are making headlines in the country. African leaders call for reforms to multilateral financial systems. Now, African nations now want the global community to honor the annual climate finance pledge they gave 14 years ago to provide $100 billion, equivalent to 14.6 trillion shillings, meant for development in many African countries being stifled with the effects of climate change. Now, the Nairobi Declaration, which will be presented in the upcoming COP28, called for a review of the debt financing architecture, restructuring of the existing debts, including granting a 10-year grace period to allow African countries gather enough resources for repayment. Let the declaration of our commitment to act in unison and deliver our aspirations go forth in the firm, clear voice of a united Africa from Nairobi today and tell the world about Africa's youth potential, opportunity, and its capacity to actualize a world of possibility. We are therefore determined to have difficult conversations, take hard decisions, and make uncomfortable changes to set international consensus on an Afrocentric and globally inclusive path into an African future. At the summit, we also made it clear that we are aware of the unjust configuration of multilateral institutional frameworks that perpetuate place African, uh, that perpetually place African nations on the back foot through costly financing which plunge our economies into debt trap and deny them resources needed to mitigate and adapt in response to climate change, invest in energy transition and facilitate industrialization to create jobs and wealth and to reduce inequality. We demand a fair playing ground for our countries to access the investment needed to unlock the potential and translate it into opportunities. We further demand a just multilateral development finance architecture to liberate our economies from odious debt and onerous barriers to necessary financial resources. Staying on the African uh, summit, uh, Africa secured $23 billion financial con commitments to combat effects of climate change. Africa has secured financial commitments to the tune of $23 billion at the Climate Africa at the Africa Climate Summit that closed in Nairobi. President William Ruto says the summit, the first of its kind on the continent, has also served to uni uni unify and solidify Africa's negotiating power as the continent gears for the next global climate event in the United Arab Emirates in December. And uh, these are the full report on the highlights of the three-day summit. During this action-focused summit, various stakeholders, including governments, the private sector, multilateral banks, and philanthropists, have made substantial commitments totaling a remarkable US dollars, 23 billion, for green growth, mitigation, and adaptation efforts across Africa. We shall use every available opportunity in the busy multilateral calendar from the G20 meeting, the United Nations General Assembly in a fortnight, the annual meetings of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund soon thereafter, as well as the COP28 to further prosecute our agenda. Africa, with the Nairobi spirit, uh, should in no way lose these two opportunities in order to push forward its own uh, agenda for more climate justice, for more concrete uh, action and honoring of commitments uh, and also for the need to adaptation and transition. The signing of Kenya's green hydrogen strategy with the European Union is expected to drive and accelerate green manufacturing and create thousands of new high-value jobs in addition to attracting large private sector 
investments. Across Africa, people fight for water and land, making families move, forcing children into child labor. We as children don't want adults to feel for us. We want to be included in finding solutions. My fellow children and I propose these solutions. Support children's projects like child-led organization on recycling and tree planting. And away from uh, that, but uh, staying on the African uh, Climate Summit, a new initiative uh, launched to cater to informal urban settlements. Uh, and uh, the affordable housing project will be among beneficiaries of the building uh, climate resilience of urban poor initiative aimed at cushioning those living in informal settlements from the adverse effects of climate change. Speaking during the sidelines of the Climate Change Summit, President William Ruto urged county governments to prepare adequately for the impending for the impending El Nino season expected from October. And uh, this was witnessed in a colorful ceremony at the Kenyatta International and uh, Convention Center. What interventions are we looking at? Critical infrastructure, critical services in cities, water, sanitation, electricity, um, uh, roads. He made the promise that his leadership will bring about change in the living condition of the poor neighborhoods. It is time to join forces to scale up our efforts and build resilience for the most vulnerable urban poor. These are the kinds of transitions that UNDP is invested in in many African countries, including a program that is more ambitious than anything we have done before. Across Sub-Saharan Africa, we are trying to support young people doing real work and making projects real and transforming their own communities. There is no money that is going into our urban areas. Our urban areas are decaying, they are dying. Don't allow them to die in your hands. County governments have made significant strides in implementing the six outcome areas. This includes setting urban governance institutions. The Homer Bay Affordable Housing Program is, uh, is, is one that has met the green standards, which means that the air circulation within the houses, uh, even with, you know, you don't need AC, air will circulate well and so on. Even as the country owes at, owes at the success of the Africa Climate Summit. Even as the country owes at the success of the African Climate Summit, non-state actors have termed it as a missed opportunity. Now, non-state actors have termed the adopted Nairobi Declaration a letdown and a missed opportunity for the African continent. Speaking hours after African heads of state and government presented the document to the world, the civil society of organizations maintained that the climate summit did not fulfill its mandate, adding that the African delegation dis disregarded the interests and aspirations of the African population. Here is a full report. Africa had an opportunity to define what that fundamentally looks like for Africans, by Africans governed by our needs. Now what they only did was just acknowledge that we do need to operationalize such a fund. But that was not an authentic and mindful approach, yet the moment was not seized and thus wasted. The declaration is silent about reforming the system the structures that made a whole continent, 55 countries, get only $33 billion, yet one country that, whose presence was very visible in this summit, that country, the United States, got $118 billion worth of SDRs. So when there is an Africa Climate Summit, we expect them to speak the language that represents our interests not to sell out and give the summit to people who are responsible for this climate crisis in the first place. And if you ask me, who are those people? I'm sure you saw them. You saw John Kerry there, who had a full platform to speak, 
who is supposed to be the climate envoy for the United States of America. There is nobody more responsible for the climate crisis than the United States of America. Africa has been sick for a very long time as a result of climate change. And we finally had an opportunity to visit the doctor. And when we did, no prescription was given. Instead, we were given painkillers as a temporary fix. And here we are yet again. Okay. And uh, away from uh, climate uh, and Africa and summits, now to ODM expels uh, Senator Ojenda MP Jalango of Fines Abwar Ab 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 Nyamita uh, Kenyan shillings at 2 million. And the Orange Democratic Movement uh, Party's National Executive Committee has announced a decision to expel five members. The NEC, in a statement to newsrooms on Wednesday after a meeting chaired by party leader Raila Odinga and National Chairman. John Badi has said that the decision was arrived at following the consideration of a report by the disciplinary committee which had been looking into the conduct of some members. Now the five are members of parliament Elisha Odiambo Gem, Gideon Ochanda Bondo, Felix Odior, Jalango Langata, Akaroli Omondi, Suba South and Kisumu Senator Tom Ojienda. Uh, they were accused of violating the party constitution under the Political Parties Act 2011 by openly associating uh, with and supporting activities of a rival political outfit as well as opposing lawful decisions made by the party organs. The ODM party has said that they are deemed to have resigned and will now commence the process of removing them from the register. Arongo MP Paul Abur and his Uriri counterpart Mark Nyamita, who also faced a similar allegations, were on the other hand fined Kenyan shillings one million each to be paid within 60 days. The party said that the two lawmakers appeared before its disciplinary committee in person and explained reasons for their actions and were further directed to offer a written apology to the party within seven days. Nairobi Women Representative Esther Pazaris was also re reprimanded for her outright defiance of the party position on the punitive finance bill 2023 she was ordered to issue a written apology to the party within seven days and find kenyan shillings 250,000 to be paid within 60 days the Raila odinga led political outfit a father resolved to reveal the nominations of four uh, to revoke the nominations of four members of the Kisumu County Assembly MCAs, namely Caroline Opar, uh, Kennedy Ajuang, Peter Obaso, and Regina Kizito. Uh, the party supports the ongoing bipartisan talks between the Azmiola Umoja One Kenya Coalition, which ODM is an affiliate, and Kenya Kwanza Alliance, and calls on Kenyans to send memoranda on the issues outlined by the dialogue team before the deadline of Friday 8th read the statement. by openly associating with and supporting activities of a rival political party and opposed lawful decisions, resolutions made by the party organs, be deemed to have resigned from the party that is ODM, and the party is hereby directed to commence the process of removing them from the register of the party. The Honorable Mark Ogola Nyameta, MP for Uriri, and the Honorable Paul Abuor of Rongo, who are facing similar accusations as the aforementioned in Roman 2 above, and appeared before the disciplinary committee in person and offered explanations which were considered by the committee, should be reprimanded and directed to offer written apology to the party within seven, seven days. days. And away from that now to court finds two former Mama Lucy hospital workers are guilty of selling babies and uh, the former social workers at Mama Lucy hospital have been convicted of trafficking children two years ago following an ex an ex following an expose by an international media house and Fred Leparan and Selena Awar Adundo 
were charged with stealing and selling babies at a varying cost of between 100,000 and 300,000. Now delivering the judgment, Melimani Senior Principal Magistrate Esther Kimili, Kimilu said all the elements of conspiracy to commit an offense were proved beyond reasonable doubt against the president uh, against Fred Lapan. The, the magistrate said the prosecution had proved, uh, proved that Leparan held three meetings the court concluded the discussion in the meetings was for the sale of a child. She added that one transaction took place after the meeting with Rose, who was given three children. However, the second defendant, Selina Adundo, was acquitted of the two charges because she was not mentioned in any of the footage broadcast by the BBC. The two accused persons, knowing that they had a duty of care, of these two of these three children they neglected their duty exposed these children to abuse jointly and uh, they failed to protect them and therefore selena and um, makala fred are guilty of the offense of child neglect as charged accused person disposed of one child for three hundred thousand and two children for free accused person used fraud means abused his position and the victim vulnerability and received payment and transferred three children. However, the magistrate acquitted Selena on the two counts as she was not captured in any of the video footage adduced in court by the prosecution. The third accused person is only convicted of three offenses of child neglect. The office did not do their duty as it, they ought to have done. Selena hoped to know that these children are now admitted in hospital. The children officer has already got a placement and these children have now been discharged and these children are now out of the hands of the hospital. On that note, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're coming back with stories that are making headlines in the dailies. Keep it science.